This is Q on CBC Radio 1 across Canada, Sirius 137 across North America and internationally at cbc.ca and on bold television. Character actor. Look that phrase up and you can take your pick of definitions. An actor who plays supporting roles or specializing in playing odd and eccentric characters. But never mind that. All you need to know is that the term does not signify second banana or subpar performance. Quite the opposite. Some of the most skilled and compelling actors around Christopher Walken, Alan Arkin, even Meryl Streep have all been categorized that way throughout their respective careers and add Canada's Maury Chaikin to that fine list. Whether he's playing a featured role in TV's Entourage or taking his turn as an ensemble player in one of Adam McGoyan's casts or starring as Detective Nero Wolfe, Maury Chaikin is pretty much unforgettable. He dominates the screen physically, but it's his subtlety, even when playing noisy, laughable guys, that's made him one of the most respected and employable actors around. Recently, he reprised his very funny role as Sam Blecker in the second season of Less Than Kind, the comedy series from HBO Canada. And right now, Maury Chaikin joins me live in Studio Q. Hello, sir. Hi, Xi'an. Very Hi. nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. There's, there's something that you omitted, though, in the, uh, in the um, introduction, and that is um, I'm very excited about announcing that... Um, I'm about to move in with Paul McCartney. <laughs> uh, I met Paul uh, at the Free Times Cafe. At, uh, I was singing at um, open mic night, and Paul uh, often comes there, and we just fell in love, and we're moving in together. <laughs> Did you know David Furnish pre Elton John? I or or yeah, or, or no, Even, no, 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 no. I met. Uh, David through uh, a, a movie called a boy a boy girl thing, right? Which he and Elton um, produced. See, yeah. and and I understand that if we brought if whenever we bring you onto the show, you'll just have connections with every guest because you not only know David Furnish, but you have a, c- a connection with Ozzy Osbourne too, right. right? Who kicked off the show? What's your connection? That's there? Right. my connection with Ozzy is that after he bit off the head of the chicken, <laughs> he threw it to me. Off stage. Right, it was a bat. No, he. Yeah. No, I played uh, his his uh, wife Sharon played my wife in the in this movie that I mentioned, this boy girl thing movie. Right, right. Yeah. So it's actually that so. movie that has uh, that connects everybody, right? That's right. Six That's degrees right. of of Maury Chaikin. Yeah. Uh, I talk about this uh, this character Sam Blecker in in Less Than Kind, and it, this could be called a a character role, I guess. He's the patriarch of his dysfunctional Winnipeg family, a driving instructor with a self destructive streak, and his death wish is almost fulfilled, literally at the start of this new season of Less Than Kind. How would you describe Sam to those who haven't encountered him? Um, Sam is, uh, a, um, an out of control, good hearted, big hearted person who just can't quite get it right Mm. with, um, with his family. He's, he's full of love, but can't express it. And he's, uh, but what he does express is anxiety, um, uh, desperation mm-hmm. and a need to dominate which uh, is kind of pathetic but at the same time he's uh, he has he has a lot of I think um, appeal to uh, to the audience in that they they pity him <laughs> you're playing him do you like him I love him. I love him. Uh, I love him. Yeah, I do. I really do. Um and, and and it's it's the same kind of love that a person has for for family. Hmm. Um where you might not, you know, you you see their foibles but at the same time you embrace them because they are a part of you. And Sam certainly is a part of me. Do you you relate to him? I do. Mm. I do. <laughs> uh, it's, that's See, a, I love him. I, I love him. Even I'm laughing at him. I, <laughs> I love the guy. You've been an actor for more than 30 years. Did you have that level of skill at the beginning of your career? <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I think, uh, I think that's something that doesn't... Uh, 
develop that either one has it or or you don't. Um, it, it's just a sensibility. I would, mm. you know, I would call I would uh, call it a sensibility rather than a uh, a talent that can be developed or honed. You've just undermined acting schools <laughs> <I know. laughs> across the country, closing yeah. down yeah, well, for been, business. Yeah. I've been trying to do that for years. <laughs> right. I'm glad I've succeeded. Well, do you work at your skill? Do you do you work at honing it, or or do, you do I practice acting? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Does that sound ridiculous? I There's this well-known <laughs> actors who still go to classes and they do. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm sure. No, I know a lot of, and I don't I, I don't denigrate that and uh, at all. It's just that um, the uh, the process that I use is. Um, is is very uh, instinctive and uh, adaptable to whatever c circumstances. It's not always the same. Well, speaking of being adaptable, <clears throat> I mean, so-called character actors. Are you yeah. okay with that? Being called a character actor? You can call me anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you're supposed to have an advantage over leading men and women in in, uh, in one sense. You get to play a greater variety of roles. I mean, notwithstanding your, your, your detective role, which is a leading role. And, and a variety of roles more frequently over time, which one would think would give you more experience, more adventure, more creative freedom. Do you feel that way? The, the, are, you, are you asking if the character actor label is limiting in some way no i'm actually actually asking the opposite i'm asking if uh the fact that you get to play a different i mean you've played everything from an accountant to a detective to a belligerent hollywood producer to right. to sam uh it seems like you 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 get to play a lot of different things that somebody who would be identified with one type of role or a leading yeah, actor would, yeah. would not get to play yeah it's it's true and it's it's a it's a real blessing it's been a real blessing over the years and I don't know what to attribute it to other than creative producers and directors who see different things in an actor. And they've seen different aspects of me. Um, you know, it's like uh, casting out of the box, mm. uh, so to speak, and uh, pushing the envelope of casting and uh, and seeing what comes out when you have a... A talented actor, um, it, the, the sky's the limit. In Do you feel like that. you've ever been typecast? No. No, uh, and 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 I, and when I, uh, I, I I'm I'm sure there have been attempts to, there have <laughs> been attempts, attempts to typecast you. Attempts to typecast yeah, me, yeah. but um, uh, that that I'm in control of that, uh, and I've kind of put myself in a position of being in control of that. Um, by uh, uh, protecting myself uh, financially and uh, uh, so that I d I'm not in a position where I have to uh, take the same kind of take gig. the same kind Over. of gigs all the time and so the word no is is my protection mm -hmm. and uh, you know it happens quite a bit but uh, I've been so happy with the way Things have uh, have um, panned out, and the kind of uh, roles that I've been offered have been interesting to me. And those are the ones that I do accept. You know, it's uh, I'm going to sound terribly naive to those who who followed your career more closely, but I, I I just always thought you were a Canadian guy. I mean, you are a Canadian guy, but I, I thought from beginning to end, uh, you actually are a New York kid, right? And then you went to you studied at University of Buffalo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you agreeing with me? Or? Okay. <laughs> Am I making this up? All right, that's <laughs> close enough. Yeah. Well, um, is that true? No, no I'm uh, okay. This is it. You studied drama I'm, at the University my, of Buffalo. My mummy is my mummy is from Canadian, Montreal. right? From originally born in Winnipeg. Okay, well, I got it all wrong. Moved at the uh, at the age of three to Montreal. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, grew up in Montreal. Became a nurse in Montreal. Uh, Met my dad, who was uh, from born in Manhattan. Oh no, born in Brooklyn, and grew up in Manhattan. Was in the army. They met in Montreal on a trip that he just took with his sister. And uh, I um, uh, th then they were married in 1946, and my mom moved to Brooklyn, where I was born, and and was raised and went to high school. Right. 
and then went to University of Buffalo, State University of Buffalo. So basically everything I said was right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you, you made right. me feel bad. I thought I had all my facts right. So, and I am a dual citizen. You're a dual citizen. Now, here's right. my question. Yeah. My question is, uh, you, you've you certainly made a case for uh, to, to stay in Canada, and you've done a lot of work in Canada, mm-hmm. where you have that opportunity where you could work on either sides of the border, yes. and, and you've obviously got such a resume that people would want you to uh, take on all kinds of rules. Tell me about your perception of why why it's okay and fruitful to stay in Canada when young acting friends of mine are always saying, I gotta go to LA for yeah. pilot season. That's a, that's a very good question. I, 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 and I'm not sure there's a definitive answer even f- for me that I know of uh, other than uh, I, um, do go to the United States when interesting things come up. Uh, and I've had some success in doing that, in staying here and being offered uh, jobs in the United States. Um, I've been very fortunate in that way. Uh, I don't, f- I never found it uh, terribly attractive to live in Los Angeles full time mm. and have the business become. Uh, overtake my life uh, and and it's very difficult to resist that when you're in the kind of in the middle of it uh, so uh, Canada has been a kind of buffer for my sanity in terms of uh, I also have a beautiful home in uh, Nova Scotia mm-hmm. which I use as a retreat and uh, is is a lifesaver for me and um, I just don't uh, don't find the need to be in the uh, in the fray. Does Canadian fray TV and film get a bad rap? From who? Canadians. From Canadians <laughs> yeah. more than yeah. anyone yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. But that's you know, it's a very long story. <laughs> if we, you know. if I'll play on your dual citizenship here. If you he put aside your Canadian modesty for a minute and, and call on your brash American side, if you <laughs> if you had to pick a role where you really thought to yourself, I nailed that one of all the, the roles that you've played over the years, what would it be? Hamlet. No, I, I never played Hamlet. <laughs> um, uh, a role that I nailed. Uh, I uh, so, some of my favorite one of one of my favorite roles was whale music, mm. and an, another one was um, uh, the role of Uncle Arthur in uh, Diane Keaton's movie Unstrung Heroes, um, and also with Adam McGoyan playing the um, the uh, wealthy. Uh, Entrepreneur, who in in the adjuster. In the adjuster, right? Yeah, Th- those are those are roles, uh, favorite roles of mine that um, that I uh, nailed. <laughs> mm. Whale music is such a is such a, a, cl- a classic. I'm, I'm 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 with you on that. Is there any kind of role that you would write for yourself, someone you haven't had a chance to play yet, besides Hamlet? Um. No, I, I, I don't, you know, not being a writer, not, not, not really being a writer myself, uh, uh, it's difficult. I leave that to the, all the brilliant writers in, in this country and all over the world to, uh, to come up with and then uh, be lucky enough to be offered that. It looks like a lot of fun making Less Than Kind. It, it is. It, it really looks. It's. It's, it's a, such, such a, a funny show. I hope people discover this. If they didn't check out the first season, uh, and it just looks like it would be. Uh, this first episode has Dave Dave Foley in it as well. Of course, Mark McKinney is the executive producer. We've had him in here talking about this. There's a kids in the hall kind of absurdity to some of it, uh, and then some of it plays out just like a fantastic sitcom and, and a family dynamic. Uh, you're having fun. I'm having a great time, Shan. It's it's uh, it's, it's it's a real blessing to be. Uh, to be put together with this group of people who all love what they're doing, all of them love what they're doing, and uh, and uh, to to feed off that energy um, 
<coughs> where you also have great material to work with, writers um, who really care about the the script and uh, and who in fact are creators of the show and one of whom uh, Marvin Kay is the, the who created the show with Chris Shazreen um, lived this story mm -hmm. to uh, to a great extent uh, growing up in Winnipeg weighing 400 pounds right. uh, as a teenager and uh, and uh, living this life Thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. Great My pleasure, pleasure to see you. Thank you. That is actor Maury Chaikin. You can see him in the role of Sam Blecker on the second season of HBO Canada's Less Than Kind.